Hey, welcome to Blue Alpine Freeze Drying. This is here in St. Anthony, Idaho. This is where they build all the freeze dryers for either your home use or if you're gonna build a business. And so we're gonna do a full tour. We're gonna meet the owners. Let's go and see if somebody's inside and they can give us a tour. Oh, hey, Corey. We're excited to kind of see what Blue Alpine's all about. Can we come inside? Yeah, come on in. Awesome. All right, we are finally at Blue Alpine's facility here in St. Anthony, Idaho. And uh, we're here with Corey Merritt, one of the owners of the company and he owns this with his other two brothers. And so in this facility that we're gonna go through, fortunately, uh, we get to see how freeze dryers are made, especially for the Blue Alpine freeze dryer. And so, Corey, why don't we just take a look at what actually happens here? Show us yeah. about what's, uh, what's yeah. the facility. I see a lot of people working here. Like how many people work for Blue Alpine? Yeah, we've got, uh, any, on any given day, there's like 20, 25 people here, but I think we've got about 30 on the payroll, constantly ticking up. Yeah, <laughs> so, you need a big space. We definitely need to add on. We are <laughs> saving up for a new building. <laughs> That's awesome. So we're gonna point out, and Corey's gonna help us understand what all of these different components are that are common in a lot of the other freeze dryer brands as well but that way we can better understand what's all in here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Freeze dryer is broken into like, essentially like three components. You have the vacuum system, and that's the, uh, that includes the vacuum chamber. The vacuum chamber itself is part of the vacuum system, so you need to have a perfect seal in order to get a good vacuum. Uh, the other part is the vacuum pump. So the vacuum pump is what creates the vacuum, but if you don't have a good seal or if something's wrong with the chamber, then like, you know, you can't get a good uh, vacuum. Refrigeration system, is really just the uh, the compressor and the evaporating coils. So, and I guess uh, the condensing unit. So, okay, so this is this is the compressor. So, this is literally like a like an air compressor, but it compresses propane essentially on the inside. Okay, and um, this is that's the uh, condensing unit. Hot refrigerant will flow into this, and it will get cooled off by the fan. So, this is really like the heat exchanger where you're rejecting all the heat. So, in okay. order for this to get cold, you've got to get this really hot uh, okay. because that heat has to go somewhere. So, if you think okay. about a lot of people think about like coldness as like uh, like that's the unit of measurement when it comes to refrigeration. And it's actually not, it's actually heat. So the amount of heat that you can reject from a system, uh, like if you can get rid of heat from a system and that's what this is doing, then you can make it colder. Okay. Um, and I know that's kind of counterintuitive, but, uh, but yeah, so this system or this machine or portion of the machine right here is the condenser where it's actually rejecting all the heat and making that uh, refrigerant into a hot like liquid at that okay. point. So there, when you talk about the refrigerant, yeah. Uh, that's what's coming out of this particular unit. Exactly, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, and it doesn't need charge, so we pinch off our, uh, most, most refrigeration systems, uh, or at least most like, yeah, professional companies will uh, pinch this off, so that way there's no chance for a leak. And yeah. that's, anyways, that's what we've chosen to do. So we have a very, very, very small like chance of leak on our, on our system. If someone's but, seeing a leak mm -hmm. in their home freeze dryer, yeah whether it's a Blue Alpine or other brands, mm -hmm. like how does that even happen? There are, on other brands, there are Schrader valves that are left on and every Schrader valve in the entire world leaks, period, full stop. If you have a Schrader valve, in order to prevent it from leaking out, you've got to change that gasket out about once a year. It, maybe just check on it every now and then, but uh, every Schrader valve leaks. But you don't have a Schrader valve. We, we decided to go away from the Schrader valve because they leak. So uh, if you're seeing a leak though, what it means is that either on our machine, it would mean, hey, maybe there's like a leak in this uh, weld right here or this uh, solder joint. Maybe there's like a leak in another solder joint somewhere, but that's that's generally what happens is yeah, there's like a leak in a solder joint or like you took the cap off your Schrader valve and it's 100% uh, it's gonna leak out. If you're seeing refrigeration that's not getting cold, generally that's an indicator of a leak. There's a lot of home freeze dryer brands, but mm -hmm. I'm here at Blue Alpine today. So I wanna yep. know uh, from, from a buyer standpoint, mm -hmm. what are you putting in here that maybe is different and better than other freeze dryer brands. We try to source like really uh, good components, components that are gonna last a long time. We do all the, the work here in house. So like soldering the refrigeration and charging it and like, you know, building the whole machine. So we try to have really good like quality, uh, not just in the components, but also like in how it's constructed. A lot of the magic also happens like in the software. So um, we allow the user to control pressure, which is not, uh, as far as I know, that's not something that like any that's other- That's only really what I've seen in commercial units. Exactly, yeah. That's more of like a commercial like uh, setting chain. But with us, uh, you can run your machine super fast or you can run it really slow and delicate. But it gives the user the ability to like run it how they'd like. If you are able to change the pressure, you can take 
you know what would be a 24-hour cycle and turn it into like an eight-hour cycle mm. uh, just on the dry like on the dry cycle essentially like pressure it's kind of like the throttle of the system. If you like ramp up the pressure, then you can just run it super fast, super aggressive. Really, you can only do that on things like candy or like meat or maybe some liquids. Uh, you can't really do that on fruit. Fruit is just going to be delicate regardless yeah. and you have to run it on a delicate cycle. You know, being able to control pressure, like if you're running a business, like being able to control the pressure is a huge deal. Like we've got a guy who's doing a meat business right now and every hour that his machine runs costs him money. So, you know, being able to run the machine being able to run 15, 20 pounds of meat in, you know, eight hours versus like 24 hours, that makes a huge difference for him. So I think his cycle, he's still running 10, just to be careful. But yeah, I mean, a 10 hour dry cycle is like, that's stellar. So, yeah. and that's what pressure allows you to do. All right, Corey, so we went through that walkthrough. Thanks for yeah. that. Yeah. So now I want to uh, go through like, what type of quality control you guys do? Because mm -hmm. I see a lot of people having these different stations. How do you ensure that the customer is getting the best quality freeze dryer when it's shipped out? Yeah, so one thing that we do is we always have one person do the task and then we always have another person check that task. So that way there's like two-step verification that like, hey, this has been performed correctly. That shows up in our uh, quality control checklist. The machines will actually spend uh, about four hours right here. We get asked a lot like, hey, do you need to do a bread load in these? And we tell them, eh, you can if you want, but like we've essentially done the bread load. We've degassed everything, vacuum degassed everything. You have the assembler that assembled it and then you have the checker who checked it off to make sure that like, hey, this is actually correct. So especially when it comes to refrigeration leaks, that's a big area that we want to get. We, we need to make sure that's like absolutely correct. So we'll take our little gas meter around and like double check every like every nook and cranny of the, of the machine. So yeah, sorry. You've really got some good quality like assurances for your mm -hmm. customers. I'm impressed. Thanks. So <laughs> uh, now I'm seeing a lot of cool colors here. So yeah. talk about what went through your mindset of creating these different colors. And I also want to know what the most popular one is. We started with just black and blue colors as far as like the two that we were offering. And then Tim did a bunch of market research on what colors are popular with other like appliance brands. And it's funny because actually our forest green is our best selling color, uh, which we did not expect. I don't know what color I expected to be better, but I didn't expect green to be our, our best seller. So yeah. uh, blue is probably our first best seller. Green is definitely like our next best seller. Yeah, I'm sure the blue, it's more, uh, brand definable mm -hmm. like that is the blue of blue alpine and exactly. then the green here camo <laughs> will actually probably be a good next camo would next be really one. fun <laughs> i'm sure that would sell out yeah they got black they got purple uh, they even have over there they have a like a, a teal mm -hmm. yes yeah, so we have teal and yeah so as of like right now uh the colors are more of a built to order so we stock the blue and the black units but we build these ones to order eventually we'd like to get to where we have every every color in stock where you just order something like it just comes right off the shelf awesome all right we're at the tail end of the actual tour part and uh Corey, you have this machine here yeah uh, tell us about what you're planning to do here. So this is our CNC machine. It's mostly used for prototyping. We are hopefully going to be able to make our own vacuum pumps in the future. Uh, we want to spend the next couple of years developing the, uh, uh, the vacuum pump itself. There's no freeze dryer out there that has a vacuum pump that was designed for freeze dryers. Uh, every vacuum pump out there is a HVAC vacuum pump that was kind of adapted to freeze dryers. The problem with that is that uh, every vacuum pump will fail. The vacuum pump on any freeze dryer, any brand, uh, is the is the weak link. You know, we are very upfront with that uh, with that piece of information. We tell all of our customers, hey, you want to buy a new vacuum pump in a couple years? Just plan on it failing. It will be the first thing that fails. And the reason for that is because vacuum pumps were never meant to ingest water, and yet we're asking them to ingest a ton of water. Um, there's things that you can do, like put a gas ballast valve, change the oil, like you do little things here and there. But at the end of the day, it's a mild steel casting in there and that was never designed to- Outside water. of like commercial freeze dryers where exactly. they have like a pump, like a libel yeah. pump where yep. it's designed to do exactly what it's supposed to do. Yep, yeah, exactly. So for, so, for like these home freeze dryers, including yourself, to make it affordable for the end user, mm -hmm. you guys are more just upfront that, hey, this is probably gonna be the first thing that fails. Exactly. It shouldn't fail in a couple months though, right? No, yeah, no, a couple months it shouldn't fail, but it should last a few years. And it's nice to know that you're you're looking at developing that because you, be you might be the first home freeze dryer vacuum manufacturer. Exactly, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's not a whole lot of manufacturers that actually make vacuum pumps in the United States. Um, so that's something that we'd like to do. But yeah, unless you're spending like seven to $90,000 on a vacuum pump, 
uh, your vacuum pump's gonna be the first thing that fails. It is a consumable, unfortunately. Well, it's, this is one of the few companies that I've gone and toured as a part of this freeze dry business channel where I've gotten this much detail of what goes into building a home freeze dryer. And I hope you've seen that through all these different videos. We've got a lot of other things that are coming about with this whole visit here. So check out those videos. Corey, thanks a lot for joining me here and uh, giving us the whole tour and hosting us and telling us about your company and best of luck. I hope we see the XL here uh, by the end of this year. Yeah, definitely. It was great having you. All right. Want to be a part of the freeze drying business community? Subscribe or follow right now or join our email list where you'll be connected to news, resource, and information that can help you thrive in your freeze drying business. Let's start growing your freeze drying future together.